Open RAN might seem like a newish topic to many, but some companies have been working on this and developing the necessary technology for years. One of those is Parallel Wireless, and I'm talking today with Keith Johnson, who is the company's president, about developments in the Open RAN sector. So, Keith, great to talk with you today. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, can you give us a sense of Parallel Wireless's position in the Open RAN sector and how you believe you differentiate yourselves in the market? No, thank you. It's, it's great to be here as well. Um, so Parallel Wireless is all about the RAN and we're all about Open RAN. So what that means is we're trying to bring software into the RAN space, into a market that traditionally was dominated by hardware and software integrated together into a single solution. Now, part of what we think sets Parallel Wireless apart is that we solve the problems for 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G in a single solution that allows operators to uh, introduce Open RAN into their existing networks in a way which is cost effective. And can you give us some examples of your company's Open RAN trials and deployments? I mean, you're already deployed out there in the field, aren't you? We are, in fact, in the field. We've done more than 80 trials over the years, you know, in particular, Axiata, Millicom, uh, Eddie Salat, uh, Hotspot, um, Orange, you know, just to name a few. Uh, we, we go through trials quite often. And, and what's been very interesting is that we've seen the dynamic in the trial shift over the years. You know, going back as early as 2012, we might have done a trial and, and the tone was, uh, what is Open RAN? Can it be valuable? Uh, the, the tone has shifted somewhat dramatically. Now it's much more about, we believe Open RAN is the future and we need to better understand how Open RAN can become part of our network in a way which is cost efficient. And so we, we see this process unfolding literally on every continent. Now, how do you think your Open RAN solutions aim to solve the challenges faced by mobile operators today? So it's a, it's a great question. And we attack that from a couple of different perspectives. Of course, one of our primary concerns is always TCO. We want to drive down the TCO for an operator, and that includes both OPEX as well as CAPEX. We do this often by moving to hardware-based supply chains that are much more open and have much more competition. And also by being software, we enable automation that drives down the cost of ongoing operations. But of course, we also think that there's an opportunity to create upside for operators, that by being more agile, by being more fluid, they can be more responsive to their end users and their customer needs, and that should create new lines of revenue. So you, you mentioned earlier, Keith, that the parallel wireless solution covers uh, 2G through to 5G. Uh, is the addition of 5G something quite recent, and how important is this for the market? So our 5G solution is just sitting in the market now. Uh, you know, we we took a strategy to make sure that we could always introduce ourselves into the existing networks. And as you well know, 5G has just over the last year or two really become um, a, a technology that's hitting mainstream deployment. And in fact, we expect that to continue for more than a decade now. You know, our, our approach has been that 5G is the cherry on top, right? This is the piece that will allow Open RAN to really build momentum and drive investment. Uh, but it isn't enough just to have 5G. You have to have the rest of the solution because there are in fact very few networks that are only 5G. And so we see 5G as an accelerator. We see it as a pivot point in the investment. We see it as something to drive down um, uh, or rather I should say to draw attention to costs in a way that may not have been paid in previous generations of the technology. But we think it is an inflection point in the open RAN evolution. And what would you say are the advantages of cloud-native software-defined Open RAN networks? So cloud-native uh, and Open RAN are their siblings of each other. You know, if, if, you, if you look at the history of data centers and you look at the history of the public clouds, then what you learn there is that you've got much more flexibility, uh, which leads to greater agility. Those things together mean you can pursue business opportunities that you may not have otherwise been able to pursue. Sometimes this means you can better integrate your products through continuous integration. Other times it means you can automate the creation of new slices to create specific tunnels of service level from the core all the way to the end user. It's this kind of programmatic attack on the network that allows it to be responsive to the needs of the business not just at the scope of a year or a month, but in fact, in the moment, the software can be responsive. Open RAN embodies a great deal of those principles. It's this concept of openness where you're taking well-defined 
bundles of capability and making them available through portable um, functional, functional sets that are commanded and controlled through APIs. Right? Those two concepts together mean that the flexibility that you currently associate with the public clouds uh, should ultimately accrue back to the RAN. And that should be differentiating for the operators. And as already mentioned, you know, cost is a very important criterion for network operators. Uh, would you say that overall open RAN architectures are cost effective? I would. I would say that. I think that the open RAN architectures uh, are more cost effective and, and that will be proven out over the course of years. You know, one of the things that I think that uh, is often lost is that architectures have to be cost effective at scale. And as I mentioned in the opening, the operators have now just started to move to a point where they're talking about open RAN deployments at scale, whole clusters, multiple clusters, uh, portions of an entire country. At that scale, open RAN will be more cost effective, both because of more efficient investment in CapEx that comes from better competition, but also through the automation that comes from uh, you know, being software defined, being software enabled. And so what's important here is that if you look at open RAN today into a trial deployment, that's a new thing for an operator. That's a new operational model. And so in the context of a single trial, maybe five or 10 sites, it may not be uh, as cost effective as an incumbent might be. And that's okay. It's meant to be a new way of doing things. But I think if you look at all the different costs in those deployments and project it out over uh, deployments at scale, it becomes quite clear that you're going to save both on the OPEX and CAPEX fronts. Okay, well, I think that's a, a great point to be ending on there. Keith, thanks very much for joining us today and giving us an update on Parallel Wireless. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.